What a great turnout, and uh, I'm going to go through a PowerPoint here with you, but I thought maybe just chat a little bit. Um, I'm up here as a CEO, but behind me is a, is a great team, many of which are here today. And at the end, this, we're going to have a little question and answer session where you get to meet some of those folks, too. Um, I, I think since this is so Ohio-oriented, you know, I, I'm always, uh, we put the plaque up on our, our stairway. You know, the Ohio State motto is, with God, all things are possible. And uh, we think we're going to do the impossible here, right? We think we're going to not just, you know, make a few vehicles here. We're trying to change, change the whole kind of region over to electric. And it's a tall order. It starts with the first vehicle. We are hyper focused on having a great first vehicle. Right? Got your first vehicle, build a brand, uh, get people to know your brand and trust you. Our first vehicle is called the Endurance, and it's called the Endurance for two reasons. First, the people. Right? The people of this region that are going to build these trucks have endured right? for, for 53 years. And they're just tough gritty, tough, hardworking people. And that really attracted us, because that's what we need. And so the vehicle is named for them, and it's also named for the vehicle itself is going to be a tough, hardworking vehicle. Um, so it's kind of tough people making a tough truck. And uh, really, that's the secret. If our, if our product <coughs> is, is great, we will be successful. And to have a great product takes a few things. And, and mostly, it takes a village. It takes all the suppliers, it takes all the support. We've got such great support. Uh, Senators O'Brien and Wooley are here. Mayor from Lord Sounds here. We've had such great support early on. And uh, so it takes political support, it takes community support, it takes supplier support. Uh, and, and we've just been thrilled. We just can't, um, we could not do it without that. It takes a movement. You know, I don't know if any of you noticed on the side of the building it says ride with Lordstown. Uh, one guy joked that I think you can see it from space. I mean, it's a, it's a big sign because we don't want to just be a, a product, we want to be a movement. It's going to take a movement, it's going to take everybody to help us, and, and everybody wants to help us. It's been uh, these supplier events that Nick was talking about uh, and Chris was talking about. You know, we, it's just been unprecedented. So. We are a little bit David and Goliath. We are a small company trying to break into the Goliath world of automotive. Um, but we are coming with a very unique product, a product like no other vehicle in the world. So we're not just coming with an electric truck. We're coming with electric truck 2.0, right? And we might get into some of this in the, in the video, but this truck should be the safest truck, the best handling truck, right? the most economical truck. This truck is equivalent to Ford coming out with a new Ford 150, just to give a generic example. And they announced that he got 75 miles per gallon. And if they announced that, you know, first of all, the physicists would come because they have broken the laws of physics. But everybody would come to see how they did it. Everybody would buy that vehicle. We are sitting on a 75 mile per gallon equivalent pickup truck that is also safer and has zero emissions and is fun to drive. We are doing little bits as we march towards production at the end of the year, uh, little bits of belief, right? A big one will be in the June auto show in Detroit. This is the first time everybody's gonna be able to see it, touch it, and drive it. And that's, that's when it's easiest to believe when it's in the flesh like that. But we have all of you guys and all of our suppliers have to believe early so that we can get to that point. So we, uh, we're, we're starting to sell trucks to Ohio companies. We announced First Energy, we ordered 250. Um, that set up, suddenly we're getting a lot of a lot of those type of orders and uh, it's starting to get really exciting. So sales, of course, are important. We always knew the truck would sell. Uh, building it is really the hard part, right? Building a good quality vehicle. But we are sitting in a gym on the plant. I think you just got to see a small fraction of it because it takes a golf cart in three or four hours to really see it. But, you know, there's thousands of robots asleep back there, right? They're going to wake up and, and start making this truck. There's 
we have more stamping presses than Tesla has, right? We have some ex-Tesla folks here, right? Um, so some of our team, for the team, we, we've been able to attract the best. <coughs> so we get people from Volkswagen and Ford and GM and Toyota and Hyundai, right? And Tesla, and we'll be able to attract them. And I think they're attractive because a, everybody wants to be part of something like this. If you're in the automotive business, it's very rare to come out with a first or something. So a lot of people are attracted to that. But also, we have enough meat on the bone where people can start to believe, especially production folks. And a lot of that meat on the bone is this factory. Right? This is, for those of you who are from this area, it, it's such a gem, right? Um, we didn't just get a factory. This thing is still warm for when it made slash Chevy crew. The agreement that we had with GM to keep it intact, because if we had to retool it, typically these type of things are just gutted, right? And you just get a shell of them. But they kept it intact. And that was that was the it took a year to work that that deal. But it was the only way we could get to market quickly and at a price point that we could afford. So all the stamping presses, all the robots, all the welding, the assembly line, a beautiful high-end paint booth, right? Paint booth just for, in general, is you can spend five, six, seven hundred million dollars on a paint booth easy, right? They're very expensive, right? We've got two of them. Right? Uh, it's, it's just uh, this facility was made for one thing and refined over 53 years to do one thing buying production of vehicles. To have it do anything else would be criminal. It's, it's, it's so hard to find something like this. They just don't exist. You don't find high volume plants to begin with, and if you do, they sure aren't fully stocked. So we really had a great step <coughs> off point, right? We don't have to spend the billions of dollars that it takes to build something like this. And so we are racing to reconfigure this plant at the same time, finishing engineering and crash testing on the vehicle. We're selling, you know, getting pre-orders during all that, and uh, they all should arrive in December, right? That's the goal, have everything kind of neat. And the first, First truck runs off the way. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, so that's the first slide. I've got 50 slides, so it's going to take a while. So the bird board stand is going to be on the back of every tailgate of our trucks, right? So um, people across the country, well, a lot of people have already heard of it, but uh, uh, we're gonna, I don't want to say put it on the map, it's already on the map, but we are going to establish it as, you know, Voltage Valley. Our goal is to not just have us here, right? There needs to be an electric vehicle in the Midwest, right? So we're trying to, I don't want to say we're going to try to be the Tesla of the Midwest, but there needs to be a Tesla of the Midwest. And we have chosen a market that's very, our lane is is pure. Nobody else is in our lane of making electric trucks for workers, right? And, and very rarely in automotive, it's so mature, right? Do you get a clear lane? Nobody is building pure charges for automotive. Uh, much less electric. You know, this is where we're, we're sitting. Um, this, uh, for example, we inherited a 2.2 megawatt solar array. Right? Uh, just everything about the plant is uh, is, is fantastic. Just uh, we have to sh shrink it a bit internally so that we can, you know, we're not going to make 427,000 vehicles the first year. Just how many cruises. We want to grow to that, but our, our challenge here is to, to shrink it so that we can effectively make small amounts as we ramp up production. But there aren't many six million square feet uh, plants on the planet, and uh, we intend to. Everybody ask how many jobs. Very important question. I, I think in good faith, all we can say is we intend to make more than four hundred twenty-seven thousand vehicles here a year. And we intend to fill this plant with the people required to do that. Uh, a little bit of the team. Um, uh, Darren is not here. Kamen is not here. Kamen is out at a show uh, selling right now. Darren comes from 30 years at GM Engineering and then um, four or five years at Karma, which is uh, uh, California. Most of, the, most of the people in our space are in California, right? The other thing is to start an electric vehicle company in this part of the world to a lot of people doesn't compute. This is a great place to make trucks 
in cars, but people don't think it's where innovation should come from. So we have to change that narrative so that people can see innovation can come from the same spot. And if innovation and manufacturing are in the same place, it's just all the better. Uh, so Darren, you know, we really like it when somebody's had, you know, a lot of time in conventional OEMs because we still have all the challenges, right? You still have taillights and seat belts and seats and steering wheels that have to put together, dashboards. So you have all the, and it has to be painted. You have all the conventional knowledge and tribal knowledge that you have to have to be able to build vehicles. And then, but we need the electrical slant uh, as well. So Darren does that, John Bo down there at the bottom. He's uh, from Tesla's Giga factory, their big battery plant. We are building a little Giga factory inside of this one. So we're gonna do our own battery pack, not the cells, but the, each vehicle has 6,000 small cells in it. And packaging those is a secret of any electric company. And so we're doing that in-house. John did it for Tesla, and now he's helping us do it. Uh, Rich Smith there, uh, Rich was his RVP of production, and he, um, did the same thing for Tesla. Early on, when Tesla first bought, they bought a kind of basically a gutted GM Toyota plant in California. And out of that one plant that they bought used from California gutted, you know, Tesla's market capitalization is more than Ford, GM, and Chrysler combined almost times two. So out of that one used plant. So we're kind of following that same recipe. We're not doing it to follow them, but it seems to be a recipe for success to have to start out with something physical like a plant. John Flora was with me from, from Workhorse, and at Workhorse, uh, we, we built UPS trucks. It was our primary customer. We made electric UPS trucks. So this Workhorse company, which is down in Cincinnati, has the most electric trucks on the road in the United States. So although it's a very relatively small number, it's the most. And so that experience, along with we're taking a run at the post office, contract uh, is where we got a lot of our knowledge that we were able to bring to this and, and quickly get to market. Uh, maybe I'll take a minute. Dale Spencer is with us today. This is his first trip here. He was uh, VP of Engineering for UPS. UPS is the largest commercial fleet in the United States. And, and Dale is responsible for all 80,000 of those brown trucks running around. So, we have the guy that ran the largest fleet in the United States, and he's joining our board of directors because we cater to fleets, and um, you know we, we, we want to think like a fleet. We want to do what fleets need, and uh, nobody in the country has done that better than Dale. He worked with us at Workforce, and so he's here and just joined us. So thank you, Dale. Uh, again, to look at the truck, we made the conscious decision that it should look like a pickup truck. Right from the outside, it has four wheels four doors, a bed, a cab, um, and, and we, we thought we should put our innovation towards what's underneath it, right? <coughs> we have four moving parts, four wheels. There's no other vehicle in the world that uses hub motors. The hub motors are on electric bikes, all those electric bird scooters, the live scooters. Uh, so they have come into existence for a different reason, but we have basically upsized those, made them very large. And so there's not a gear, there's not one gear in this vehicle. There's not a drive shaft, there's not an axle, there's not a U-joint, there's not a differential, there's sure not a transmission. There are four moving parts for four tires. Quite remarkable. And that makes it simple enough, it takes a lot of engineering to do it and a lot of software to control those four, but it makes it simple enough. We have to hit a price point. We're telling a fleet, uh, this is the least expensive vehicle you can own. Right? It's the number one thing they look at. But they look at all all in costs, right? How much to buy it, how much for fuel, and how much for maintenance. But when you look at it that way, if you keep this truck for eight years, if a fleet keeps this truck for eight years, which is their standard length of time, it's equivalent to buying a Ford 150 for $14,000, right, when you look at the total all-in cost. So think about that. That's, it, it's the least expensive truck a fleet can buy, by far. We also tell them it's the safest. Why is it the safest? Because uh, we don't have a V8 in the front, right? We have a lot of crush zone. And a crash, that crush is what saves you, right? So we have a great crush zone. We're much less likely to roll over because of the low center of gravity. So we're safe on a rollover. Um, so it's, if you tell a fleet, it's the least expensive by far. It's the safest. And it's, it's got the best traction. 
and least chance of rollover. What's not the love? The only thing it can't drive, do is drive from here to California, right? But there's so many fleets, and many of you control those fleets, or associated with those fleets, that just stay local, right? That's what most fleets do. So a pickup truck, everybody knows, is the number one vehicle in America for consumers, but it also is the number one vehicle for fleets. So we've entered into the number one area uh, we just cater to fleets instead of consumers. Chris is trying to move me along here. Um, okay, so this is just a quick overview. Uh, I think we got a better shot of this later, Chris, but it's, it's, it's just this simple. This is a little bit <laughs> simplistic, but there's a battery pack in the floor. There are four motors those are, uh, in the wheels. There's no electric motor here with a differential with drive shafts going out there like a Tesla. Uh, I used to tell people it's far simpler than even a Model T. Model T had about 500 moving parts in its drive shaft. Pistons, <laughs> valves, gears, transmissions, drive, drive shafts. A Tesla has about 70 moving parts. We have four. It is impossible if you're going to have four-wheel drive to have less than four moving parts. So we are at the best it can be. Right? This is a great picture. This is when we were building the first one. So this is a <coughs> conventional uh, Four wheel drive, or this is actually two wheel drive, but uh, pickup truck with the lid off, and this is ours. Uh, this is your classic. Every pickup truck in the world is like this. Every four wheel drive pickup truck in the world is the same. It has an engine, transmission, a drive shaft going back to a differential, change the, change the energy 90 degrees out uh, to the rear wheels. A transfer case here, another little drive shaft going up there to another differential, change it 90 degrees going out to the front. And of course, you have the gas tank and muffler and all the things that are associated with that. But if you just beam down here from another planet and somebody showed you that versus this, and this isn't a great shot, but this is it. There's no pieces missing from this. Uh, this starts to really look, and, and, and I think we're all aware of what's in a transmission and what's in, a, in an engine. They're very complicated. A whole city. So the engines used to come in the back of the plant here to be, to be installed. Transmission used to come in the back of the plant. Right? Those, there were entire cities that made those. Right? So it wasn't just this plant. Right? So we're doing all that in-house. We're going to make our own electric motors here. We're going to make our own battery packs here. Um, and we are trying to associate people like wiring harness people, seat people, all the people that want to be associated with an OEM and want to supply it. We want them to either, we're going to offer them space inside this plant, or we're going to offer them land, or the mayor's going to offer them a deal they can't refuse, and they're going to build it, right? <laughs> so we are uh, really trying to, to attract sister companies and suppliers. But I, I, it's just a great shot to show, you know, not we all drive, we all drove here in gas cars, right? Um, they have been the way. But as far as local trucks, we think that is over. We are reinventing it from scratch as if we've never seen a pickup truck before. And then you wind up with this, right? But I think you can see some similarities. You see a, a hard working chassis that's, that's going to hold up forever. We use whatever we could. We didn't reinvent anything we didn't have to reinvent. So, um, but what we did reinvent, we think changes everything. Okay, Chris. <coughs> Little shot, it's hard to see, but that's the hub motor. Everything's in the wheel. The brake's in there, the bearing's in there, the motor's in there. Uh, it's all, there's no shaft going into it to propel it. Uh, versus this is old school where you got a differential going in, you know, with an axle in there driving, driving that wheel. Okay, Chris, go ahead. That is the hub, that's the official hub motor. If you take the tire off, that's what you see. It bolts up these five or six lugs, just like a conventional wheel does. So if you have a flat tire, you can change it like conventional. Uh, so uh, again, we're just, we're just thrilled that you're, you're helping us. We need help, right? This, again, can't be done in a vacuum. We are a small company trying to enter into a space where there, if you notice, there are no small companies, no small car companies in the United States. Tesla broke through, right, as a public company in, in the space. Before Tesla, the last public car company in the United States 
was Willie's Jeep in 1942. And they only did it because of the war. That's how hard it is to get into this space, right? But all those folks, Willie's came in with, you know, a little different twist, but basically pistons and uh, transmission and drive shaft and differential. Just a different twist on the same recipe. So we are coming in with a completely different recipe, but it has yielded a car. Well, when we say we're going to get better traction than any pickup truck ever made. So we're in snow next to a Ford 150. I don't even think Ford 150 is a bad guy. They're just the best-selling vehicle in America for 38 years. So I think they're a great example. Uh, we will have better traction than them out of the snow. And, and I don't say that lightly, right? We understand that a pickup truck is the most engineered thing that the human race has ever endeavored upon. It's more than the space shuttle, it's more than all that times five. The man hours in a modern day vehicle over these last hundred years are beyond comprehension. Just look at this one, this is an assembly factory, right? Think of all the factories around the world and all the engineers and all the robot manufacturers and everything that goes into, right? There's a piston ring somewhere maker that just makes piston rings, right? The oil that lubricates all that, all the infrastructure around it, right? And when we stand here as a new entrant saying, and they all pride themselves on four-wheel traction, right? Every pickup truck commercial you see will show something in mud getting great traction, right? And we're coming and saying we're going to beat that in our first model. But if we had there, if we started with what they started with, we of course we couldn't touch it. No, you know. But we just try to really put everything out of our mind of what a conventional vehicle is and say, if I had today's tools, if I had today's motors and today's batteries and today's software, and I had never seen a pickup truck, how would we make it? And, that, and that's why, with a different paradigm, you're, you're able to change the game. And again, nothing can be all things to all people. We can't drive to California without charging stations along the way. But absent of that one thing, we didn't want to just be the most economical truck. We wanted to be the best truck a fleet could buy. And that is a tall order, and we don't take it, I don't say it lightly. Um, and we could never, ever do it if we were just coming out with a, a gas truck. But uh, I believe we're going to be able to accomplish that mission.